Hello. Today I'm going to try to explain to you the geography of the vaults underground in Edinburgh. Hello, my name's Tony. Welcome to Edinburgh. Um, yeah, it's a funny one for people to kind of understand the vaults and the underground cities of Edinburgh. And I've done this on a video a while ago, but it was during lockdown and it was at home and I only used pictures. So I thought we would try to explain it to you by walking about so that you can kind of get where the vaults are and what they are for, for, well, yeah, to help you understand. So we need to head down and have a look at the Royal Mile from the side first. So to kind of show you and start to understand the geography of where the vaults are, how they were created and how they work, you've kind of got to understand the geography of the Royal Mile and how the Royal Mile and the new town and, and everything was starting to be built. So Edinburgh is built on hills, lots of hills and valleys and things like that. So Princess Street Gardens is a great example and it's easier to kind of see from this side even though the vaults are the opposite side. So we'll use this as an example and we need to look at the Royal Mile from here. And even from here, it's difficult for me to show you exactly, but it's the best I've kind of got. So Edinburgh Castle at the top of the Royal Mile. And although you can't really tell because the, the buildings look kind of uniform, they're not. It's actually built on a roughly about a mile long downward slope all the way down to Holyrood Palace. It's, it was one big, long um, ramp, essentially, for lack of a better, better description. And you can kind of see it in some of the streets that come off it. Like I said, it's more difficult if you look at the Royal Mill because we're looking at the uniformity of the top of the buildings. But if we look at the streets a little bit, Oh, my, my finger's going to ruin it with the focus, but you see that? You see how... The, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, my finger's put out of focus. I don't do that. But hopefully you can see. There's Market Street there. You see how that is going down at an angle there. That's kind of how it works. That's kind of how it works. And the bridges were designed to fill valleys like this one we're on right here to make the city far more sort of one level, which was difficult because the area wasn't one level. Remember, the Royal Mile, and specifically Edinburgh Castle, was built there because it was very defendable. You know, it's up a rock and up a, there's only one way up. There was a rock and then they built the lock to make it even more defendable from this side. So there was lots of reasons why it kind of started there. But for expansion wise, not easy. And they were very clever on how they did this. And we can use the North Bridge to be an example. Although when you look at it, you might not believe it, it's kind of sort of a mirror image of each other. You've got the Royal Mile on the centre, say for example, and where the you're going to have to imagine I'm drawing on my face here. Where the Royal Mile is here, either side was a valley and a valley, kind of. The valley on one side is this, Princess Street Gardens, leading over to this, Princess Street. Yeah? On the other side, the valley, so to speak, is the cow gate, the grass market, leading over to where it would then come up again and be a little, bit, bit, bleh, a little bit more flat. With me? So the only difference that's going on from this side of the Royal Mile and the other side of the Royal Mile is the other side is more densely packed with buildings, where this is more open with street gardens and a, bit, and, a, and a beautiful art gallery and all these you know, it, it, it's just more open otherwise it would look the same because they probably would have done the same at the other side and in fact Edinburgh helps me itself in explaining this look at this here we go so Edinburgh Castle leading downwards and then there is Prince Street Gardens see how there's kind of a valley and it was the same on the other side that kind of explains it better so the bridge made it far more linear to go to this side right here on Princess Street and it does exactly the same on the opposite side. Visual aids, how handy was that? So now if we look from here, that is the North Bridge there, okay? You see that? Royal Mile, North Bridge, making it far more level to get to Princess Street, going over the valley here, 
Okay, does that make sense? You've got to now picture that on the opposite side and all the vaults, little vaults, instead of being big arches, which is what's underneath the bridge there, yeah, these have levels and little arches underneath, which became the vaults. And I'll put a picture up to make it a little bit more clear for you on the opposite side. So, hopefully now that you're starting to kind of understand that the vaults are instead of the arches of a bridge, if you looked at a, a large bridge from the side, yeah, makes sense. Instead of one big arch, it's lots of different levels with lots of different smaller arches and a kind of a path in between them all as well. I'll show you from a different side as well. Now this here is George IV Bridge on the Royal Mile. There's the mound right behind me there, okay? And as far as I'm aware, I've never heard of any vaults underneath here in George IV Bridge. I could be completely wrong. There could be some vaults in here as well. I've just never seen them and I've never seen anyone get access to them. But I could be completely wrong. I'm not, I'm not, you know, claiming ownership on being right on that. But what we can do from here is we can look across at the South Bridge and kind of show you what I mean. And right here is a brilliant example of the bridge going over the valley and showing how it looks, how South Bridge looks like this of buildings where actually it's a bridge just with high buildings either side of it. So, see, it doesn't look like a bridge, but that is George IV Bridge. And if we look here, this is how it works. It's just a bridge with a building right up against it that essentially has entrances into it halfway up the building at the street level here on the bridge and entrances at the bottom end underneath. So this, that's the grass market and this is the start of the cow gate. If this was on the opposite side, that would be Princess Street Gardens leading up to the Royal Mile. Is that all starting to make sense now? Yeah? Hopefully you're starting to follow me. So if we go exactly opposite us here, we can start to see it from this side. So here we go, this is the cow gate. Tall buildings, and right there, right in the distance, as close as zoomed in as I can get, you see the cars driving over the bridge right here, that is the South Bridge. So, the vaults are in the bridge with the buildings either side of the bridge sealing them in. Starting to make sense? Let's go down there and have a look. So, just in case again, to help make it completely clear and understand, this is us on the South Bridge and I can show you exactly, using the buildings and the South Bridge, and Blair Street, I can show you exactly how it works. Probably could have done this easier, but it's been more fun the way we've done it. Here is the South Bridge, which looks like a street with buildings. However, if we take this building, for example, and we just go over here, we can see how it's actually a bridge that goes over this valley. And if we go down here, we can get an understanding. So underneath there, the road part, underneath the road part right there, in there is the vault, because that is actually a bridge. So here we are at the bottom of Blair Street. Once again, there's the buildings, there's the bridge. See? So if we go along, the vaults are actually inside the bridge. There are these arches. Instead of these arches, it's little kind of levels with smaller arches in between and actually a kind of path and street in between them. So the vaults are in here, in between the buildings. And this is how they kind of got lost. We're going to go, just to finish it off, we're going to go into a little bit of the history of it now. So when the vaults were built, the idea was that they would actually be storage areas and workshops for 
um, leather makers, butchers, uh, carpenters, any business. The idea would be that they would have the shop and underneath they would have these workshops where they could do it in, in, the, in the bridge. It was supposed to be, uh, uh, what's the word, practical. It's supposed to be practical. However, don't know if it was because of the speed that the bridge was built at, but they weren't sealed properly. They weren't sealed properly at all. And after no time, I mean a year or two, all the businesses moved out, moved out of all that area because anything they were doing in there was just getting ruined. And no sooner had they moved out, the underworld of Edinburgh moved in. Homeless people, people who had been essentially kicked out of their houses for the building of all this, because a lot of buildings were knocked down to start the expansion of the new town and everything. So that all got knocked down. All the homeless people started to move in there. All the underworld of Edinburgh, gamblers, brothels, and all these things started to move into there as well. And that became the underworld of Edinburgh, essentially the underground city. So when you hear about the underground city, that's what it means. It got so bad in there that eventually it got sealed up, eventually forgotten about, and then rediscovered by accident, and now became tours like this right here. Market tours, for example, on this side, and on the opposite side of the bridge, Old Reiki tours. This is what they do. They go in here and then go into the bridge. That's kind of how it works. Does that now make sense? So when we talk about Edinburgh as underground city, that's what we mean. That's kind of where it was. That's kind of how the vaults came into existence. That's how they got this dark, undertone and not nice place and then bad vibes and all these sort of things. That and the fact that the people of Edinburgh also thought the South Bridge was cursed because when, very briefly, when they were going to open it, Edinburgh Council wanted to make a grand thing of it so they said let's get Edinburgh's oldest resident to open the bridge and be the first person to walk across it and literally days, days before the South Bridge was opened, she died. So they decided to keep the promise and her coffin became the very first thing to pass over South Bridge when it opened. So then Edinburgh residents thought it was cursed and all of this just, just enhanced all that. Hopefully now you understand the geography and how the vaults came to be in Edinburgh. That's been a fun one today. I've enjoyed that today. I've not really went into a big history thing like that for a while, an exploration about city for a while. If you've enjoyed that, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Please remember to join me on all my social media platforms, um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and of course here on YouTube. They're all called Clan Bradford. Come find me, come join me. Until next time, bye humans.